Hey, what is up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy. And in this video, uh, I've got kind of a shorter video for you here today. I wanna show you a feature in Logic Pro that I don't see talked about a whole lot. It's kind of a niche thing, uh, but if you're really into like making electronic drum beats and things like that, you may find this really interesting. And this is live pattern recording. So live pattern recording can be accessed right here by turning on this button in the step sequencer. And what this does is it allows you to enter notes into the step sequencer in real time. Now in Logic Pro, you can now convert uh, MIDI regions over to step sequencer regions. So it's entirely possible that you'd never want to use this function, but I'm gonna show you it anyway. Maybe it'll be an interesting workflow uh, tool for you, especially if you don't like working in the piano roll editor and you prefer working in the step sequencer, but maybe you've got an idea in your head that you can play on the keyboard or on your MIDI controller, but you're not so sure how to enter in that same rhythm in the step sequencer. And I find it's a huge time saver too, just because this is a lot of note entry. This is a lot to enter in uh, note by note, and um, you can probably do it quicker as long as you get the idea internally, you can probably do it quicker by using the live pattern recording feature. Before we get into the tutorial, I need to quickly tell you about today's sponsor, Boombox. Boombox is a fantastic resource for musicians, bands, artists, and producers who are looking to collaborate, promote their music, and create new musical ideas. I've been using Boombox for the past two years with my mixing and production clients. You can upload just about any type of file, audio files, and full DAW sessions, and your collaborators can then leave secure time-stamped feedback on your project. When I work with clients that don't have a paid Boombox account, I can create a custom inbox so they can send me their files remotely. And that's just scratching the surface. You can create custom artist pages to share your music with the world, generate contracts and manage royalty splits, create shareable playlists, and tap into the power of Boombot AI, a virtual AI co-writer. Head over to boombox.io today and sign up to get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so to start, we're just going to create a blank pattern region. So I'm going to right click up here or control click and select create pattern region. And if you're going to be using 16 steps, that's really only going to be one bar if you're using 16th notes. If you switch over to 32 steps, this is only going to be two bars with 16th notes. So if I want a full four bar sequence of 16th notes, it's going to be 64 steps. So that's what I'm going to set this to. And the way that live pattern recording works is you turn this on, you don't actually have to press record. All you have to do is press play. And you can see it enters in those notes that I played on my MIDI controller. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that pass. But how do you stay in time? Um, well, the best thing you wanna do here is turn on your metronome and you want the metronome to play while you're just doing normal playback, not necessarily during recording, because you're not gonna actually hit R to record, you're just gonna press spacebar to start live pattern recording. What I also recommend doing is setting a cycle range one bar before the uh, pattern region, and then one bar after the pattern region. This will just give you a little bit of lead in and lead out time, and you'll be able to hear the metronome, you know, a few clicks of the metronome before you need to come in. and then you'd start entering in your notes. So let me start off with like a, a really basic kick and snare pattern. So you could hear I was like really off time. The upside of using a uh, live pattern recording is that all of the steps that you enter in are going to be automatically quantized to the grid of the step sequencer. And you can also see that it's velocity sensitive, so it automatically enters in the velocity that you've played. So this is another big advantage of doing it this way rather than typing it in one at a time and then having to go in and manually adjust those velocities. Let's add in some hi-hats.
There we go. And I even threw in an open hi hat at the end there for good measure. And let's layer up some claps. This will be nice and easy. Let's add in like some, yeah, like some little white noise crashes. Some little horn stabs, maybe. Okay, um, another thing I want to add in are some subs. So I've got a couple of sub sounds there. I'm going to do that. And I've added in one more sample here on F sharp three in drum machine designer from logics library. And uh, let's do one more pass with that F sharp three. There we go. So then when you're done, you just turn off live pattern recording and you can treat the pattern region and the step sequencer the same way you would any other drum pattern. Now this can also be used for synthesizers and tonal instruments. However, I don't really recommend it um, because it's honestly just gonna be easier to do that kind of work in the piano roll editor and then just quantize, or you can turn on input quantize. But I'll go ahead and show you how to do that anyway. Again, there are plenty of people out there who really just don't like using the piano roll editor. Okay, so I've got this little plucky instrument here. I don't recommend using this for like uh, strings and pads and more lyrical things. It works really well for just short uh, pointed synthesizer or melodic ideas. I do recommend setting your key here first. So I'm going to set this to A minor, natural minor that is. And I'll go ahead and set my key in my, of my song to A minor as well. And then I can create that lead in and lead out. And the one upside of using this for tonal or melodic instruments is that you don't have to have all of the notes that you're going to use in the step sequencer. If you've ever tried to work with melodic instruments in the step sequencer, it can sometimes be a pain. Each note that you play in, even if it's not shown in the step sequencer, will get added to the step sequencer as a new row as you enter it in. So let's give that a shot. I honestly don't even know if this part is going to be uh, in key with the subs and the horn stabs, but we'll give it a shot. So the mistake I made there was I did not set what my pattern length was going to be. So I'm going to set this to 32 steps and we'll give this another shot. So I really only need to play up to bar five and then the whole thing will just be repeated. And there we go. And let's give this a listen. Okay, so that is live pattern recording in Logic Pro. If I didn't mention this earlier, this is not just a Logic Pro 11 thing. This was also available in some of the later versions of Logic 10 as well. I think Logic 10.7 and up have this, but it may even go all the way back to 10.6 or 10.5, I can't recall. If you would like me to demonstrate any other sort of alternative workflows 
or if there's anything in particular that you'd like to see demonstrated in Logic Pro 11, please let me know in the comments below and I'll try to do a video on it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.